In this section, we will discuss the important topic of phase noise in OFDM communication systems. Here we show the architecture of a direct conversion receiver. In a direct conversion receiver, we have the oscillator, which has an in-phase and quadrature phase term. The oscillator itself can be generated using a synthesizer driven by a crystal, for example, at 40 megahertz, and then the synthesizer creates a carrier at, for example, 5.2 gigahertz. And that is used to mix down the signal down to baseband, where we filter the signal and, of course, reject the double frequency term in a direct conversion receiver. We also have the situation with the quadrature phase term. Now, every oscillator has noise. And in particular, a synthesizer using a PLL has a particular characteristic of noise. At any rate, we will refer to this noise as phase noise. And the purpose of this section is to understand what the effect of phase noise is on the performance of an OFDM system. Here's an actual measurement of the phase noise of an improved VCO and PLL system, but this is typically what you would see for a PLL synthesizer, PLL-based synthesizer. Now the noise is high at the lower offsets from the carrier frequency and it starts to decrease and then flattens out due to the effect of an additive noise term in the phase error. And here we are basically showing an offset with respect to the carrier frequency. This diagram actually shows the plot of the power spectral density for the phase noise model for PLL-based synthesizer, similar to the actual measured synthesizer phase noise. And again, we see the offset from the carrier frequency. We see we have a flat noise up to a certain frequency, F1 equals to 10 kilohertz. Then it starts to roll off at minus 20 dB per decade, and then it flattens out. And here we're actually showing the actual noise and dBc means dB with respect to the carrier. So that's minus 78.2 dB with respect to the carrier per hertz because we're talking about the power spectral density. And this is a model that can be used in order to calculate the effect of phase error in an OFDM system. So let's take a look at the effect of phase noise and the direct conversion receiver. Here we're showing the model of the phase noise in, a, in the oscillator itself. So the oscillator has an amplitude U oscillator shown over here. It has the frequency of interest, which is F sub zero, which is the frequency of interest, the center frequency of the oscillator. There is a frequency deviation F of D, which is time invariant, or we can actually say it's slowly changing, so we'll consider it to be a constant. So that's a deviation with respect to the actual center frequency of the oscillator. And we have the term e to the j sigma of t, which is the phase noise, which is what we're talking about. And we have a term which is additive Gaussian noise, u sub r. So if we look at this expression then, which makes sense, we basically have a frequency deviation plus a phase noise. And we're actually breaking out the phase noise in terms of this exponential here. Now the phase noise itself is time variant and is expressed in radians. Now usually the phase noise is much less than 1, so it's small. So we can approximate the exponential as follows. So e to the j sigma t is approximately equal to 1 plus j sigma of t. And this comes about because the cosine of a very small angle is 1, and the sine of a very small angle is the angle itself. So we get this approximation. Now if we substitute this approximation back into this expression, and since we're dealing with a direct conversion receiver, then we can actually use the low-pass representation shown over here, where we've actually modulated it down to baseband. And we have a basic constant term 1 plus j sigma sub t. So this is the low-pass representation of a noisy oscillator. Now, what's very important is the fact that this what this approximation shows is that the exponential now became a multiplicative factor. So let's take a look at this diagram here. Here we show the power spectral density of the oscillator. We see that we have a frequency de deviation f of d and we have the actual phase noise. And in the case of OFDM, for each carrier, 
then each carrier gets multiplied by the phase noise and we have the carrier itself added to that so we get the graph shown here after demodulation after the mixing and low pass filtering this is the actual spectrum we obtain for the OFDM signal so basically we have the OFDM carriers plus a multiplicative term which is this sigmas of t shown over here which has a power spectral density shown here which is an actual measurement or model is in the diagram over here so this is the model for the phase noise of an oscillator and what happens in an OFDM system so we get the situation where we have the OFDM carrier itself plus the phase noise and we're going to investigate what the effect of this phase noise is on the performance of an OFDM system now obviously if the the spacing between carriers and an OFDM system is smaller then we get more pronounced intercarrier interference due to phase noise but before we proceed further let's take a look at the effect of the phase noise on the single constellation here we actually show the constellation the demodulate constellation for 16 QAM using 2048 carriers and here's a reference uh, a nice page paper by Klaus on the influence of RF oscillators on OFDM signal so this is actually the received constellation due to the effect of phase noise in the oscillator ignoring all other sources of distortion such as uh, additive Gaussian noise or nonlinearities if we pay close attention to the constellation we see that all the constellation points have been rotated by a constant phase term so that's one observation the second observation is the fact that each constellation point basically has a cloud which is similar to additive white Gaussian noise the, these noisy components around the constellation point are actually due to the phase noise of the oscillator so the phase noise can be divided into two parts one is what we refer to as a common phase error which affects all the carriers in the same manner and this corresponds to the fact that the all the carriers have been rotated by the same phase shifted by the same phase and that's the common phase error term now it's very important to emphasize that this common phase error term due to the oscillator phase noise is the same for all the carriers within an OFDM symbol but from symbol to symbol it could change so this is a very important point the other contribution of the phase noise is the intercarrier interference or phase noise ICI contribution which we see over here in terms of the deviations from the ideal constellation point and this is due to the ICI of the phase noise and we have of course the common phase error for all the carriers which is just a simple phase shift but it could change from symbol to symbol but it is the same within one OFEM symbol now let's take a look at the case where we have uh, 64 QAM with a three and a quarter rate with a 10 to the minus 5 bit error rate for example and basically we show that basically if we do not combat phase noise then phase noise will cause a degradation of 4 dB compared to the case where we have no phase noise so if we don't tackle phase noise we have a degradation of 4 dB at 10 to the minus 5 so at 10 to the minus 5 we'll have a degradation of 4 dB and we'll show this in a, in a minute now if we attempt to actually estimate the common phase error and correct for it so we compensate for it then the degradation can be reduced to 0.3 dB which is very significant so let's take a look at some simulation results this is a very important uh, result that we show over here here we have the bit error rate and the average uh, ES over N0 which is related to the signal noise ratio now this curve here is the case where we have phase noise with no compensation that is we don't attempt to correct for the detriment effects of phase noise the curve over here is the case where we have no phase noise there is no phase noise so we see that if we don't tackle phase noise we have a severe degradation in the performance of an OFDM system for example let's take the case over here at 10 to the minus 3 we see that 
is actually one, two, three, three and a half, and a ten to the minus four, about roughly four more than four dB degradation due to phase noise. Now if we can estimate the common phase error and compensate for it, then we get the curve shown over here and we go from a 4 dB degradation down to about 0.3 dB degradation. So this shows that in an OFDM system it is very important to compensate for oscillator phase noise in order to achieve the performance that we desire from an OFDM system otherwise we're not going to meet our performance requirements. Now it turns out that the common phase error term can be tracked using the pilots on a per symbol basis and actually estimated and corrected. So please refer to the section on pilot tracking in order to get an idea of how to do that. So in A22.11a we can actually use the four pilots in order to estimate the common phase error term and compensate for it so instead of getting a performance over here we get the actual performance shown here which is close to the ideal case where we have no phase error. Now what about the term due to the intercarrier interference due to the phase error? We go back over here we see that the phase error causes a common phase error term which we said we can actually compensate for by processing the pilots within a symbol and correct for it and eliminate it. But we also have the fact that the phase noise causes intercarrier interference and as we can see each carrier interferes in all the other carriers. Now it turns out that it's very difficult to get a closed form solution for the uh, contribution of the intercarrier interference due to phase noise and actually a upper bound is, is arrived at. But what we need to say is the fact that number one the more carriers you have then you have more contributions from all the other carriers into that carrier due to the intercarrier interference of the phase noise. So the larger the number of carriers, the more problem you have with the phase error. Second thing is, which is pretty obvious here, is the fact that if we reduce the spacing between the carriers, then the component due to the phase error that contributes to intercarrier interference becomes more prominent and causes more of a problem. So those are things to keep in mind when designing an OFDM system. Actually in scalable OFDMA, which we treat in a separate tutorial, we see that one of the motivations behind using scalable OFDMA is the fact that we want to keep the carrier spacing constant even though we increase the number of points in the FFT so we scale the number of points in the FFT with a the bandwidth therefore keeping the spacing between the carriers constant and avoiding the fact that for smaller bandwidths and using large number of points in the FFT we get much smaller spacing between the carriers in which case the phase noise becomes very problematic. So here we have a couple of paragraphs from the paper by Robertson and Kaiser and the statement at the top here basically says that the phase noise due to intercarrier interference should be set several dB the channel noise level otherwise your bit error rate curve is going to floor which means that because of the phase noise intercarrier interference even though you increase the signal to noise ratio and by that we actually mean you might even inc you're increasing the power of of the transmitter for example you still do not get a performance that you would desire because you have a floor and the bit error rate. And the floor is due to the fact that even though you have a high SNR, the contribution of the phase noise ICI is large and you get a floor. And that's very detrimental, the fact that even though you have a high SNR, your bit error rate doesn't fall off, so you have a floor in that case. So when you design an OFDM system, you have to make sure that the noise contributed by the phase noise ICI is several dBs below the actual signal to noise ratio that you need in order to meet your requirements. And that goes back to the actual design of the synthesizer and the PLL and all its parameters and the architecture you use for the synthesizer. And that is a whole separate issue, but the key thing here is that you need to drive the requirements for the design of the synthesizer and the PLL such that the phase noise 
is such that the ICI due to phase noise is much smaller, several dB smaller than the signal to noise ratio. Another point is what we mentioned before, and this comes out of the analysis, and again refer to this paper, but basically it says that for a fixed noise model, the total system bandwidth governing the ICI power is the number of OFTM subcarriers. Obviously, when you increase the bandwidth, you can increase the number of OFTM subcarriers. The more OFTM subcarriers, then the level of the ICI due to phase noise increases. So this is another issue that you have to consider when you design an OFDM system.